Hey friends, great to have you back and welcome to episode number 16. Since the previous two episodes, we started our adventure into the JIT world. In, uh, in episode number 14, we had a discussion over what is a JIT, how just-in-time compilation works, and some of the high-level concepts. And um, in episode 15, we talked about LLVM-related uh, JIT concepts like ORC, MCJIT, some terminologies, high, like the high-level API of ORC, like how, how to use LLJIT and LLLazyJIT, and two major solutions to uh, implement our own JIT engine. So we continue uh, our journey uh, in episode 16 as well, but we're going to have a deeper dive into the ORC uh, design. Like always, some updates. In the past three weeks, I guess three weeks, I was working uh, on the JIT as usual. I tried to add the support for, uh, add the AST support to the engine and it like it went well. Uh, right now our engine accepts some AST form, compiles it into the target code and make it available for invocation. But working on that made me realize that, okay, I might like our SLIR is basics, of course, but I still might need some big changes into the. Uh, to, I need to make big change, changes to the SLIR. So I went back, I started changing stuff, and very soon I realized that okay, our error handling system is really on my uh, on my nerve, and I have to fix it. Up until now, after sixteen episodes, I always tried to postpone the like postponed working on the error like anything error related uh to the like to the future as the last piece of the compiler wiring but um yeah it's really on my nerve i have to uh, i had to fix it basically we had two different classes of errors one was like llvm related errors whatever llvm provides and i had my own uh like design for certain errors both were fine, but they kind of couldn't coexist, right? So I I was like, yeah, I I can't take it anymore. Let's unify them. Let's just have one error handling system or uh, that just works, right? So I started to actually refactor certain errors to act as LLVM errors. It's it's not that hard. It's actually really easy. LLVM provides enough documentation around, around errors for us to uh, use them. But the problem was I the way I want my errors to be, I need so many of them. Um, upon like. Before this episode, I used to have like I used to create the error messages manually in a, like a CPP file and use them wherever I need to, but it like it was really ridiculous to do that. Like it took me a lot of time. So I was like, okay, I know about ta table gen. I knew that I have to uh, use table gen at some stage. To today is the day. Let's figure it out. Uh, um, I looked at, at the table gen documentation. I, cr I created my own instance, like series instance of the table gen to generate errors for me. I created a backend for the errors. So right now we can actually create our errors in a, like a nice descriptive way in, in a, like an ODS style um, file and basically pass it to the, our own table gen instance. And it, it creates a... Uh, it creates a nice CPP file with all the errors like uh, in it, which is nice. It works. I I still have uh, didn't finish it completely yet. I need to make some adjustments, but I'm on the, I'm on track. After doing this, I'm going to go back working on the SLIR and uh, make some changes and finally uh, finish the AST support to the JIT, like the basic AST support to the JIT. But enough of updates. Uh, let's see what's the plan for today. Excuse me. As I mentioned, we had a brief uh, look at LLJIT and LLLazyJIT, uh, the two uh, JIT engines that LLVM provides out of the box. 
but in, in order to use them and to understand them better we need to have a better understanding of each component that make up that makes up that uh, those two engines and in order to understand components better we need to start from the like from layers what is layers and what are layers and how can we use them uh, in today's episode we're going to uh, specifically look at how to use layers but in the future episode we're going to define our own layers and look at how, like the details of uh, layer definition in the future but what are layers basically uh, in orc design layers are the basic block of an engine so we can create a jet engine by having several layers connect to, uh, connected to each other and like work in a uh, like a certain way we can think of them as a like a data pipeline because at the end of the day each layer gets some something in a like a different format it it's it might be either an ast or, or llvm ir or i don't know some uh compilation result or whatever and generate like transform that data into another form and layers are kind of uh, are composable like kind of because um, they have orders we have to compose them in an order uh, that makes sense and each layer has some requirements on its, its own and it has its own details uh, their their interface might might not even be the same but the important uh, thing here is that the order of layers matters the way we chain them together uh, basically dictates the requirements sorry the requirements dictates how we actually chain them together um, each layer in, in orc design each layer holds a, a reference to the next layer or the downstream layer um if actually ooh. so we can actually really like uh, to have a kind of a graph to demonstrate how layers work in org like we, ha we can have something like this right there's a hierarchy of layers in the jit engine depends on the like depends on uh, our goal the number of layers might be different the layers themselves might be different so right now we have a JIT engine and two input types input type a input type b for example input type a can be like asts input type b can be object files directly right um, layer a add the support for input type a to our JIT engine and layer b add, adds the support to for an input type b so we can submit uh, like a value of input type b sorry a into our JIT engine using the layer a and we can do the same for layer uh, input type B and layer B. But both of layer A and B have the same parent, layer C. So when we submit something to, to the JIT engine that has the input type A, layer A will take care of that, transform that input type into something that layer C expects. And layer B does the same thing for input type B. So at the end of the day, layer C will accept just one input type and accepts only one input type. It receives that input type, makes some transformations to it, pass it to layer D, layer D does the same and pass it to layer E, and finally layer E uh, com compiles it to a target code or to another, uh, to some, even to something uh, else. It, it doesn't have to be target code, I'll just put target code there because it's uh, relevant to us and make it available for like lookups invocation and stuff like that right that's how layers like as you can see lay, like layer itself is a concept and it's like a really abstract concept uh, we don't know what each layer does we can actually define different layers with different goals and to see them in action we're going to have a look at the kaleidoscope jit uh, tutorial today so um 
Debian examples. What is it? Yeah. Let's go JIT and chapter one. So, um, in the previous episode, we talked about uh, LL JIT and LL Lazy JIT, right? The engines, those two engines that LLVM provides out of the box. But in uh, in Kaleidoscope tutorial, the like we don't use them, right? We create our own engine that are, that is kind of the same. They like our engine serves the same purpose as the LLG. So understanding uh, like this really simple engine helps us understand LLG better, right? So we start by creating a, like a class called Kaleidoscope JIT. We hold a unique pointer to the execution session. If you remember, execution session represent a running JIT. We have a data layout, a mangler that mangles the name of the symbols in the in memory. We have two layers, right? We have an object layer and a compile layer. These two layers are provided by LLVM already. Uh, we don't have to be worried about that. Object layer is an object linking layer and compile layer is a IR compile layer. Basically, sorry, compile layer is our compiler and excuse me, compile layer is our compiler and object layer is our kind of linker. We have just one uh, JIT dialib. Uh, this is like, here's the interesting part that actually we create our chain of layers. First of all, we create the execution session. We move the execution ses uh, session that we pass to the constructor to ES. Same, we do the same for the data layout and uh, we create a new mangler based on the data layout and the execution session. Here's the fun part. We define a new object layer uh by calling the constructor on the uh, object link layer object linking layer passing the uh, execution session and a concurrent co sorry passing the execution session and the lambda that create creates a unique pointer to a memory management if you remember about uh, like if you remember from the previous episode we talked about this like memory manage managers are just uh, a tool that manages memory for us like allocations deallocations and stuff like that llvm provides the section memory manager which is like a really simple memory manager memory manager most of the time it would be fine for our use cases and we use it here today by we i mean like whoever wrote this tutorial um we're not going to be worried about this thing yet just yet uh, but I, I even didn't ha uh, like didn't create anything new for Serene's JIT. We're going to look at this uh, our own implementation of uh, JIT in the future. Um, but I I'm using the same memory manager for now. But I'm pretty sure we're going to like we have to create our own memory manager in the future as well. But for now, um, the object linking layers just need a needs a lambda. To create like that to create a memory manager right and we use the section memory manager as our default memory manager so we have the we have the object layer which is the most uh like it's the, the end layer in our data pipeline we have we have only two layers but um we can say that object uh, layer is kind of the target layer for for us if it makes sense and compile la <coughs> sorry and compile layer is kind of our first layer to create the compile layer we call the constructor of ir compile layer by passing the execution session and the downstream layer right our downstream layer would be object layer and that's why we pass it here. So on paper, compile layer doesn't know what exact layer is downstream to it. 
it just knows it holds a reference to something some sort of a layer and it knows that whenever it compiles anything it has to pass the result of that compilation to that downstream layer so on paper we should be able to add a, like a i don't know a third uh, layer here whatever layer right let's call it layer a and have a, like a different layer here then we can actually uh, construct that layer by passing some stuff here like again we might need the execution session and object layer as our downstream um, layer and then sorry and then instead of object layer here we can pass a so then we're going to have three oh i forgot to actually <laughs> use es here so instead of uh, having just two layers we, intr we introduce a new layer in between compile layer and object layer that does something for us what does it do we don't know because like it's an app like we just m made it uh, on the fly but my point is like compile layer doesn't have to know what exact layer is coming after it it just need to know what layer to pass the compilation result to right so going back to yeah okay so here we have the compiler layer and we tell it to pass whatever you compile to the object layer and then we need to pass a compiler uh, to it like right now in this tutorial we're using the concurrent ir compiler which is like a multi-threaded compiler um there's like a simple compiler as well which is like single th threaded we can use that one as well but it's not uh, the topic of discussion for today we, we can have a look at it in the future time Finally, we create our main jitdilib by creating a new bare jitdilib called main. Like these two greater and uh, uh, these two. Sorry, I'm lost a little bit. So we're calling it main, but those two greater signs are just uh, there. We can literally call it main like this or whatever name we want to, right? There's no requirement to do that. And we added dynamic uh, generator to our main jit dialib. What is, gen what is a generator? We'll look at it in the future. And finally, uh, we make sure that whenever we, like in our destructor, we make sure to end the session, end the jit session. And if anything bad happened, just report the error. So um, we have a static method called create to actually create an instance of kaleidoscope jit we create a like a execution process control we, we're going to have a look at it in the future what is it and what it does if there was an error take the error and return it otherwise create an execution session using that uh, execute process control and then create a, a jit target machine builder uh, with the target triple and everything create the da um, sorry, data layout and finally call the constructor of Kaleidoscope JIT and return a unique pointer. Nothing is special. Uh, we have some uh, like a couple of uh, getters for getting like the uh, JIT dialib and data layout. And finally, the most important member function add measure. So compiler layer accepts uh, LLVM IR uh module to like as an input so add modules have two inputs a thread safe module that we talked about it in the previous episode it's just a wrapper around uh, the normal llvm module that makes it thread safe and the resource tracker uh, i guess we we talked about tra uh, resource trackers in the um, previous episode as well but the purpose of a resource tracker is to keep track of the resources that we allocate, right? We can use resource tracker to remove them. So 
if since it's an optional argument if there wasn't any uh, resource tra tracker passed to our function we just get the default re resource tracker for our main jitdilib and then we we call the member function add of our compile layer passing the resource tracker and moving the mm, thread safe module to it this is how actually we invoke a layer as we as we're going to see in the future when we want to define our own layer um, we have to create an add uh, member function that accepts the input of that layer basically and finally return any possible error that it might return the lookup member function is a straightforward just look up whatever symbol that we have like the name of the symbol that we get into the main jitdilib and of course mangle the name and then look it up in the execution session so this is it because the compiler layer is already defined in llvm and provided by the llvm we don't link uh, we don't look into the uh, details of it because uh we're going to sh i'm going to show you in the future how to define a layer and it's kind of uh, more uh, relevant to that uh, discussion so going back to our uh, kind of a slides i don't know what to call this one um we have something like this you know right now we saw something like this we have just one input type which is LLVM IR module, we have two layers, compile, uh, compile layer or compiler layer and object layer. The input of like compiler layer, compile layer actually accepts any form of LLVM IR module or a thread safe, uh, thread safe module. It compiles it to some like, I don't know, it compiles it to a target, to some target code and pass it to object layer and object layer just links stuff based on some rules together and kind of provide the target code for us the object layer on its own doesn't provide the target code but the arrow here i try to demonstrate that after object layer we have some target code ready to work with we can look look up symbols in it we can exit like invoke any symbol and stuff like that it doesn't uh, the target like object layer doesn't pro create anything special for it it just links a stuff together uh, i'm going to uh, talk about uh, symbol uh, resolution and stuff like that in the future and at that time it it would make more sense and let's have a look at the second example on chapter two so most of the code is the same as before but we added another layer so we created another layer called uh, optimized layer which is an ir transform layer again this layer is provided by llvm we don't look into how it works uh, we're going to use it only so if we look at the constructor uh, object layer is our final layer compile layer sits just before it and optimized layer sits in front like it would be the first layer in our pipeline it gets just um, uh, it gets the execution session and they're like a reference to the next layer which in this case is compiler the compile layer uh, again as i mentioned earlier it can be any other uh, layer as long as the output of optimized layer makes sense for that layer it doesn't have to be compiled layer but since our design is like optimized layer compiled layer and uh, linked layer that's why uh, it sits in front and finally it gets a, like a um, function to optimize the module i'm going to show you how it works and the rest are uh, uh, the, the rest is the same um, only in the add module member function this time instead of calling the compile layer we call optimize layer because optimize layer is now the front layer for us the layer that is the start of our pipeline 
we call the add member function like before we pass the resource tracker and the thread safe module lookup is the same and here's the function that we pass to the optimized layer it takes a thread safe module and the material materialization responsibility <laughs> again this word and i guess i showed you this already but thread safe module has a uh, Thread safe module has a member function called with module do that accepts a lam lambda that accepts a, a lambda that lambda gets the LLVM IR module that wrapped in inside the uh, thread safe module as an argument and inside this lambda we can work with that LLVM module in a thread safe manners. Uh, what we're going to do here is to create a pass manager apply some passes to the module, run the pass manager, and finally move the thread safe module out. So what happens here is that in the previous example, when we pass the LLVM module to the compile layer, it just compiles it into some target code, pass it to the object layer. But what if we want to do, we want to like run some passes, some optimization on our LLVM module? easy we create a new layer we pass the llvm module to that one it takes care of all the pass management and stuff like that as you can see right now and the input for this module is a, a llvm module the output is a is just another llvm module not just another llvm module it's the same llvm modules module but with some passes applied to it and then we can pass it to the compile layer but if we uh, if we have a look at oh how we use it actually so you can search for it in the source code oops sorry yep uh, here's how we define a JIT like not we uh, the author defined the JIT a unique pointer to the kaleidoscope cli JIT and in initialize module we use the same data layout that our JIT has to set the data layout of the module and um, yeah whenever we actually whenever we want to handle any definition in in kaleidoscope you have to read the kaleidoscope code to like understand this kind of stuff like the how the ASD works and stuff like that but it's kind of obvious it if the definition was a function ASD and stuff like that we need to do this um, as you can see we we call the add module and pass a LLVM module to it so add module is like the interface of our JIT engine uh, to the outside world um, one thing that is really uh, interesting and I want you to see is uh, this block of code here. So the function name is handle top level expressions. Whenever in the when, in this toy language, whenever we write something in the top level of our uh, module, I guess uh, this function is going to get called to handle that expression. What happens is. Um, we get the default resource tracker of our uh, main JIT dialib. So we have only one, if you remember, we had only one JIT dialib in our engine. We get the, we, we create a resource tracker for that JIT dialib and name it RT. Then we have a module that like we compile the expression we have, we have to a, like a LLVM module, right? basically that's what a, a compiler front end does right we we talked about it uh, in previous episodes and it's not important right now what is important is that this tsm here contains an llvm like a thread safe llvm module right now and we pass it to add module to to be added to our JIT engine by calling add module passing a, the moving the tsm into it and passing the uh, resource tracker we add our llvm module to our jit engine 
so from the outside world by doing this that like that llvm module we know that it's going to be compiled into tar target code and be available to us as long as there's no error messages that exit on error will just uh, stop the execution if something bad happens as soon as we actually added our uh, module to our engine we called initialize a new like initial initialize module to create to set up a new module again that's not important for us and this is like what is really important to us we look up something called i know like a non expert or anonymous expression right this name in here is what the author of this code chose to name this like symbol that we have in the llvm module uh, ir module right this is something up up to you to decide they decided to use this name right you can pretty much use whatever you like based on your rules they chose to use this right so they wrap their uh, anonymous expressions into a in a function and they named that function uh anonymous expression that's why we look up this symbol here so what's happening here is that we have we have an expression on our like top level expression we wrap it into a function called anonymous expression compile it to llvm ir module add that module to our jet engine and by then we kind of uh expect that G, like our engine compiles it to the target code some target code and make it available for us to interact with and we can look it up if everything goes right we're going to have a symbol with the same name that we can uh, look it up and invoke it so we're looking it up we get a like a reference to it a pointer to it uh, sorry as you can see uh, the this sim uh, variable here has the type jit evaluated symbol we had a uh, we, we had a look at this type in the previous episode and we just cast it to a, a function pointer because we like in this tu uh, tutorial we know we only support doubles and stuff like that we just we know the signature like in, in an actual world world we don't know we might not know the signature and we have to figure it out in some way but right now uh it's a fixed signature we know we know the signatures that that's why we used uh this kind of fun function pointer we get the address to that team cast it to a function pointer put it in fp and finally uh, call fp and print out the result right here's the interesting point before um before we kind of before the handle top level expression uh ends we call resource tracker remove why is that so as you can see here we always look up the same symbol if we invoke this function many times we're going to look up the same symbol over and over again but what happens if we have a symbol we have the symbol already and define the same symbol again right it's going to fail like we can't really define a symbol by the like our jit engine doesn't support that so what's happening here is whenever we see a top level expression in our code we compile it to llvm ir add it to our jit uh, we give it the same name all the time we look it up we invoke the function pointer or cast it to function pointer and invoke it and make sure to remove that function that resource tracker tracks the function tracks the ir sorry llvm ir module that we add to our jit right so we, we're like okay here is a module i want to compile to the target code we hand it to the jit and we say here is the resource tracker i want to associate these two to the, together whenever we're done with the invocation and interaction uh, with our target code we just call remove on this resource tracker to make sure that jit gets rid of that definition that target code for us after rt remove we from the outside world 
we would be like, okay, that code doesn't exist anymore. So there, there wouldn't be any anonymous expression anymore. We can actually use the uh, redefine this uh, symbol again. That's why we call remove. Um, and it's really important to uh, do this because we don't want to, our JIT doesn't support redefining a symbol, right? So going back to our slides, um, actually, if I want to show you uh, an overview of what we talked about for chapter two, sorry, chapter two, this would be three, put it in three. So we added another layer called um, what was it optimize layer optimize layer right that optimize layer was our like input so a from node a we would go to d and stuff to b and here from d to Oh, sorry. Let's rename this to E. It's easier. Okay. Okay, let me generate this one really quick. Oh, yeah. So, as you can see, uh, we don't care how we get a, like a LLVM module because it's not the topic of the discussion for today. We talked about it already. We know how to like generate LLVM modules, but when we end uh, we when we end up with an LLVM module, we know in our second example we have three layers. The first one is the new layer, optimized layer. We pass the LLVM IR to it. It applies some passes to it and generate a, not gen, it doesn't generate, it applies some passes to it and pass the same LLVM module to the compile layer. Compiler layer ex, uh, expects some uh, LLVM IR module and then compiles it to the target code, pass it to object link layer to take care of the linkage and then make it available to us. So, as you can see, layers are the basic block of uh, any JIT engine in uh, Orc V2. I, I'm, I really like this design. I'm really impressed with the design. It's so easy to follow, so easy to understand, easy to extend, scalable. I, I'm loving it. And as we, as I'm going to show you in the in the future episodes, it's really easy to actually define a layer. So layers can be anything. They like we can create create layers to kind of look inside our data pipeline as a, like a tap layer, or we can add layers to add support for ASTs. That that's what I did. We can add layers to I don't know. Basically, add byte codes, whatever. Like it's up to you and whatever goal you have you can use layers to achieve your goal. You create a pipeline based on your layers, LLVM layers, and uh, get what you, whatever you want out of your uh, jet engine. So I guess that's it for today, folks. Um, layers are quite nice. Like this design is quite nice. I, I really enjoyed using it. I hope you find them useful as well um please share your uh feedback with me about the whole video series and if you like what i do if you enjoy uh the video series either this one or the one about emacs uh please consider subscribe to the channel and uh, leave a like it would help me quite a lot um and that's it enjoy your day and see you in the future episodes cheers <laughs>